Mattia Bonotto will leave his position as Ferrari Formula 1 boss at the end of an increasingly difficult year for the team. Intense speculation that Ferrari was preparing for Bonotto's exit was emphatically rejected by the team in the build-up to the season finale in Abu Dhabi. But a week later, Bonotto offered his resignation anyway, and Ferrari doesn't have an immediate replacement lined up. So what's going on, why has it come to this, and what does it mean for Ferrari's 2023 title ambitions? As we attempt to make sense of Ferrari's first managerial change in four seasons, make sure you comment, like and subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell to show us your support. In Bonotto's last race in charge of the team in Abu Dhabi, Ferrari driver Charles Leclerc beat Red Bull Sergio Perez to second place in the Grand Prix and in the Championship. That marked a small victory of sorts at the end of a season that failed to live up to its early year promise. Ferrari began 2022 by winning in Bahrain and led both championships early on, but its title challenges crumbled due to a mix of poor reliability, strategic mistakes, driver errors and poor development. It failed to win a race after the summer break and despite scoring 12 pole positions, more than any other team, ended the year with just 4 victories. The first sign of pressure on Bonotto came ahead of Ferrari's home race in Italy in September, when chairman John Elkin gave Bonotto a public vote of confidence but also said the entire team, including the team principal, needed to improve. At the end of the season, speculation mounted in Italy and France that Ferrari was preparing to replace Bonotto with Sauber boss Fred Vasseur. It was understood that Bonotto sought assurances from Elkin this was untrue, and this prompted Ferrari's strong public denial of those rumours two weeks ago. But just days after the season finale, the story was revived, with reports that Bonotto was discussing the terms of his exit from Ferrari, a company he has spent his entire career with since joining in 1995 as an engine engineer in the test team. Bonotto rose to the top in Ferrari's engine ranks before becoming chief technical officer in 2016 and three years later replaced Maurizio Arrivabene as team principal. In his time leading the team, Ferrari was embroiled in an engine controversy in 2019 that led to technical clarifications from the FIA and a huge dip in Ferrari's form as two winless years followed. The new 2022 regulations afforded an opportunity for Ferrari to recover, which it did to a significant extent, although weaknesses clearly remain across the board. And a fatal rift has emerged, leading to confirmation in the second week of F1's offseason that Bonotto has resigned from the team and will officially leave at the end of December. There are rumours of a fallout between Bonotto and Elkin, and one thing that should be noted here is that Bonotto wasn't exactly an Elkin hire. His rise was primarily down to others in Ferrari, like the late Sergio Marchionne and also Louis Camilleri, who stepped down as CEO suddenly at the end of 2020. Elkin was always involved, but always felt more detached from the F1 team at that time. With Elkin now supported by new CEO Benedetto Vigna, it seems Bonotto lost the support of upper management. And this might be linked to Leclerc's camp supposedly angling for a change in leadership as well. There were some obviously strained moments earlier this year between Bonotto and Leclerc, with Bonotto even travelling to Monaco to meet with his driver between races. Leclerc is contracted to Ferrari until the end of 2025, but has been linked with a potential move away from the team after that. Bringing Vasseur in would mean putting a long-time Leclerc ally in charge, as Vasseur's ART team ran Leclerc in karting and GP3, and Vasseur was already Sauber boss when Leclerc made his F1 debut with that team in 2018. That's not been confirmed though, and now we know Ferrari doesn't have an instant successor lined up after all. It claims to only now be starting the process of identifying a replacement for Bonotto and hopes to finalise that at the start of 2023. In the interim, Bonotto's responsibilities are likely to be taken over on a short-term basis by Vigna. Right back at the start of the season in Bahrain, there was talk that Bonotto needed some early wins to secure his future. But the first real indication of internal pressure came in the form of that Elkin interview with Gazzetta dello Sport before Monza. It may have been entirely sincere and perhaps Elkin truly had complete faith in Bonotto, and this was just an honest appraisal. But in hindsight, it could be read as a thinly veiled threat, along the lines of, you've taken us a long way, but if we don't see evidence you can take us further, you're out. And the fact is, for all the good that Bonotto did, there were still some painfully familiar failings. 
Ferrari's old culture of fear hasn't quite been fully replaced by one where specific problems are accepted by all and simply processed into oblivion without anyone feeling their position is at risk. The team also lacked both confidence in how it was developing the car and sufficient finance under F1's budget cap to be as aggressive with its development as its rivals as well. In addition, Ferrari has simply not been strong operationally, and while this has been a collective failure across the board, Venotto has to take responsibility for it as the man in charge. Mercedes hasn't been in the picture this year and Red Bull started on the back foot and was there for the taking through the first half of 2022, yet Ferrari let it off the hook. A couple of years ago, when Ferrari was nowhere, Elkin set Bonotto a target, that by 2022 he expected the team to be in contention and winning races. That's exactly where it's been this year, which has been Bonotto's main defence, but it did ultimately have potential to achieve even more. Bonotto wanted to be judged on 2023 instead, by which time he presumably expected all the many failings of 2022 to have been understood and addressed. But Red Bull and Mercedes aren't standing still, so there's every chance that Ferrari slips to third next season instead of kicking on. We can't say that with certainty of course, but Red Bull and Mercedes are unlikely to hand Ferrari as good an opportunity to win both championships as it had this season. That chance was squandered, progress has faltered, and for that, Bonotto seems to have paid the price. He's always defended his team even at the peak of its problems, and he has talked earnestly about how united it is and how everyone is pulling together to improve on its weaknesses for next year. But was that the reality behind the scenes? The sporting division itself may have been united, but the connection between Bonotto and Elkin has been questioned. Now that he's left, we know something was amiss. Either Bonotto's exit was always on the immediate horizon and Elkin wasn't being entirely honest with him, or something has changed to convince Bonotto that he doesn't have the support he thought he had at Ferrari, or there has simply been a mutual breakdown in trust. While Bonotto hadn't made a cast iron case to be kept on, chances are he would have been given more time at one of Ferrari's more patient rivals. Bonotto's leadership was meant to usher in a period of stability for Ferrari again and a move away from the politics that created a culture of fear and a revolving door policy for much of its history. His departure has undermined that process. Ferrari's period of stunning success at the start of the 2000s came when senior team personnel were left to do their jobs despite years of near misses with a super expensive and brilliant lead driver in Michael Schumacher. Ever since that system was dropped, so have the titles, which is unlikely to be a coincidence. Post Enzo Ferrari, who died in 1988, and before the Jean Todd Ross Braun era that began properly with Braun's arrival in 1997, the team was run in a similar way to now, with near misses, subsequent mass sackings, and further crises. Todd and Braun stabilised that, got rid of the culture, and the team became almost unbeatable for years on end. But it then reverted to type, and Bonotto can point to a few important victories in trying to overcome that. He restored the team to having a competitive engine and chassis, and helped get rid of the worst of the poisonous fear culture that prevailed during Arriva Bene's time. There are also arguments to be made that the specific issues of 2022 are out of his direct control, but could have been improved given time and support. Pinning the blame on the trackside team, the engine division, the financial department or whoever would have been cheap arguments for Bonotto to make given one of the cornerstones of his Ferrari leadership has been not pointing fingers. But they could have been viewed as the basis for Ferrari accepting that there was a bigger long-term job here to make the team a title winner again, and that stability on high was the best approach in the medium term. Stability is something that Ferrari doesn't seem to appreciate though, at least not to the same degree as its rivals, which have been much more successful in the modern era of Formula 1. Red Bull Racing, for example, has been managed by Christian Horner for its entirety dating back to 2005, while Mercedes has been headed by Toto Wolff for a decade. By comparison, Ferrari is now preparing for its fifth team principle in the V6 Turbo Hybrid era, which only began in 2014. Even Renault's haphazard works team hasn't had so much upheaval in that time. Ferrari still seems to be its own worst enemy when it comes to assembling a crack F1 team fit for purpose in the modern era. It can only be imagined how much wasted energy goes into dealing with the fallout of yet another management change and how near impossible it becomes to focus on the things that need to be addressed. Of course, if Bonotto alone truly was an obstacle to the necessary reforms, getting rid of him is the right move. If not, and it is more likely he would only have been part of the problem, it's essential that his departure is just part of the solution. If Elkin and Wigner get their next appointment wrong, Ferrari could be paying the price for years to come.